and welcome to the Jamie Foster Brown Show. And I am, of course, your host, Jamie Foster Brown. And today, please, please, baby, please, baby, please help me welcome the award-winning music genius himself, Amadeus. Amadeus, how are you, baby boy? <laughs> I am great, Queen. I'm great. What an amazing introduction. The introduction I've been waiting two, over two decades to get and the time has come the time has come <laughs> well let me just tell them a little bit about you if they don't already know his real name is antoine thompson get it right a-n-t-w-a-n -A -N. <laughs> <-A> -E <laughs> always dreamed about being on the cover of sister to sister magazine now why didn't i know that why didn't you speak up black men gotta speak up okay <laughs> that's all right we got it today we got you here today we hear time listen timing was everything timing is everything and and you know it's right now it's the right time right now it's more important now. absolutely so now after tonight we're going to still stay in touch because things we we have things to do because i major in black men that's, that's my major Absolutely. Okay, I want you to understand that. Yes, okay. ma'am. <laughs> and but you love to give back to the community. You're very passionate about helping the young generation. You're a professional drummer. And in 2000, you launched the Platinum Boy Music. Yes. Your very own imprint. 2007, you became Trey Song's musical director. That Negro with. <laughs> We'll talk about him later. <laughs> Amadeus is a motivational speaker and he loves black people and the culture. So we go, we're here, we're here. Absolutely, we're we absolutely here. here. Okay. We're here, we here. He, his first time, you were the first producer for Lil Mo and Foxy Brown. Yes. Right. My husband loved his and Foxy Brown. She came to my apartment uh, up here in New York and was cooking for him. I think it was for two days. Wow. He just thought, my husband was just as much in love with you guys as I was. And, you know, right. for him, he let me travel with black men all over the United States, all over the world. He, could, he, he was the biggest pimp out there. He was like, hey, just get out there and give me my story, honey. Hey. He quit his job to come and work for me. Wow. Said, you, you gotta, you know, he was regulating oil pipelines and nuclear reactors with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. <laughs> he was making some money. Now he said, well, I see my wife sometimes she making a little bit of money here, a little bit of money in that month. But I thought, hmm, I could quit my job and, and just work for her. I said, Negro man, I'm just out here having a good time acting up. Right. What are you talking about? You quit? He quit his job. Wow. And he came and worked for me and ran the company. I mean, he's such an incredible... That's awesome. Such a blessing. I told God, I know God loves me because he gave me him. You know. Amen. Amen. So I honor Lorenzo Brown. But right now yes. I gotta I gotta dig into you. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. I gotta know things like um from the Bronx, right? Mm-hmm. How how did you not get into trouble? Weren't you on 169th Street in Washington? What is that? Right. What yeah, that's that happening there? All kind of stuff was happening. And I think the only thing that what, what, what kept me in shape, you know, my parents didn't play no games. Um, you know, they were both church folk, you know, so we was in church on Sundays. Um, they sent me and my siblings to Catholic school, you know, um, all our school, you know, all the school years. Um, so I had to dress up, wear the slacks, the dress shirts, the, the ties, you know, so we, we, we were taught uh, how, to, how to carry ourselves, you know, and when I, I felt- um, one, let me see. Me, uh, it's me, and my brother. You got to count them. You yeah. Them. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting older. I'm getting older, Jamie. I'm getting older okay, out here okay, in these streets. Okay, okay, okay. This is it's me and my brother, and two sisters. So yes, <laughs> four of us total. Me okay. with three siblings. Yes. <laughs> okay. Are they older, younger? No, I'm the oldest. I'm the oldest. Okay. My brother's Did second. You get any whippings? Huh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, are whippings good things to have? Um, I think so, because, you know, when you get one and you get a good one, you know, you don't want it to happen again, no, you right? But the problem is, as a kid, when you're in the moment in school and doing different things, you ain't thinking about the whipping. You're thinking about being a class clown like I was. You're thinking about making everybody laugh. You're thinking about having the attention. And then once you get in trouble and you get that note home, then you start thinking about the whipping like, the whipping like damn, I didn't did it again. You know what I mean? And How were you the class clown? What were you doing? Oh man, the, between the faces and the jokes and the outburst and the wanting to answer every question with not the right answer, but more of 
the answer of that would make the whole room laugh and turn up. So that was that was me. I, I wanted all the attention. I wanted to make everybody laugh. So you were an entertainer. Yes. But then you chose to be behind the scenes. Right. How did that happen? Uh, the drums, you know, I fell in love with the drums, picked up the drumsticks in fourth grade. Um, now, I didn't, prior to that, I didn't have any aspirations or any dreams or desires to be in music. I loved music. I loved hip hop, but I didn't have anything that, that you know, was like, okay, I want to be a musician. I want to be an artist. I want to be a producer. But in fourth Where grade. Where did your talent come from? Who did it come from? Uh, well, my, my both my parents aren't musicians, um, but they are music lovers. So I think God just you know, reach down upon the, you know, on Washington Avenue, once tonight from the Bronx and just sprinkle a little sauce over young a Prince Amadeus and, was you know. a lot of sauce and know? a lot of chatter. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget that part. Listen, it, it, took me, it took me a while to get there, Jamie. I ain't gonna lie. It, it, took, it, 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 was, it was a lot of me doing it because I loved it before I got there. Because I started so young. I started in fourth grade, right? And then I and I started producing or wanting to start producing between 14 and 15 years old. So I didn't really know about the business aspect of it. It was just, yo, I love making beats. I love playing drums. This is what I love to do. I'm going to do this 24 seven. And it was kind of later on when I learned that it could be an actual career and something that I can live off of. You know what I mean? So your father and them were, they weren't musicians. There were, there were no musicians in your family at all. None. You're None. the first. Yep. And None. huge, became huge also yeah. the first and the biggest. Yeah. Know? I, you know, I, I dreamed of it. Once I stepped into the music scene, you know, with me playing drums and kind of getting a feel for it, I, then is when I, that's when I started to have the dreams and the aspirations of wanting to be a professional drummer and, you know, tour the entire world and start producing and making beats for, you know, some of my favorite artists. So that's when the dreams started happening. And then once I started having those dreams, I believed in myself. I believed in the fact that I was capable of, you know, living th those dreams eventually being my reality. And, and that's when it was off to running. You know what I mean? Okay. A lot of people had that, but you would, something was being poured into you because that music that you came up with is, is you know, come on, you're Chris Brown and them, come on. You know, right. like, were you shocked? Who was your first artist? Who was the first uh, artist you produced? The first artist was Foxy Brown. Um, mm -hmm. And that was on, she was working on, uh, she was signed to Def Jam at the time and she was working on the Cradle to the Grave movie and soundtrack. Uh, with features, I love that uh, movie. yes, yes, Jet Li, DMX, Gabrielle Union, Anthony Anderson, Jet, uh, to name a few. Um, so that the song ended up being the title and the theme song to the movie and soundtrack. So the name of the song is Cradle to the Grave, just like the movie and the soundtrack. So that was my first, you know, placement ever, first time working with a, a major artist such as Fox. How did Brown. that come? To, okay, this is your first song. So mm -hmm. how, tell me how it developed in your head and how right, did right. it get to them? Right, so I had a family friend uh, um, that was kind of dabbling in the, in the business. He was, um, I'm not sure if he was like the assistant or, or interning at Interscope Records at the time, and then kind of got wind of the fact that I was like making beats and producing. Um, we got together, he heard what I was doing, he felt it was, you know, pretty good. Um, and he scheduled me a meeting um, with Anton Marchand, who's Foxy's brother, who at that time was the director of a &R excuse me, at Interscope Records. Um, I went and sat down, played, you know, my beats for him. Now, the beats that I was making when I first started was pretty much all hip hop, all street, all gutter, right? And he was working on R&B and pop artists. Um, so he was like, listen, what you're making is not really what I'm looking for. He was like, but I have someone that, you know, these beats would be perfect for. And he's like, my sister. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, who's your sister? And he's like, Foxy Brown. I'm like, they just sister, bro. Like, and then he told me his government name and me being a fan of her, I knew her last name was Marshan. Mm -hmm. So when he's like, yo, my name is, you know, because her name was Inga Marshan, it's Inga Marshan. And when he's like, my name is Gavin, Mar I mean, uh, Anton Marshan, I'm like, yo, this is really, you know, Foxy's brother. So he's like, listen, my sister's going to be in the studio tonight, mm -hmm. 7 p.m., Chung King Studio. Go down there. I, you know, I'm going to tell her you're coming by. Play her the, exact, the, the same beat you played me, the same exact order. He's like, I know she's going to love something. Um, and mind you, it's like three o'clock, four o'clock in the day. So I had some hours to kill. I just moved around the city, waiting for that time to come. Got down to the studio, walked into the room and was like, oh, snap, that's Foxy Brown. You know what I mean? And she was, you know, she was straight to it. Like, let me, let me hear what you got. Like, it wasn't no love, no, 
you know, messing around. She's like, put your CD in, let me hear what you got. And I played a few beats and she was kind of like silent and just vibing and not in her head, you know, stopped me and was like, can you leave this with me? And I'm like, all right, cool. You know, so I left the CD with her. Um, she's like, nice to meet you and this and this and that. And I left, I remember leaving mad hype. Yo, that was the name of song? Uh, Cradle to the Grave. Cradle to the Grave, okay, so go ahead. I yes. didn't know that was her singing. I love that movie. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, so I get a call the next day, um, you know, from her brother and was like, yo, bro, you know, she picked two tracks of yours and that, that she really loves. And he was like, you know, one is actually going to be used, you know, for the movie and soundtrack, Cradle to the Grave. And the name of the song is Cradle to the Grave, right? Then did he's like- the lyrics? Did you write the lyrics or did she put no, the lyrics? She, no, she did all of the lyrics okay. and, I, and I created all of the music. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then she made another song called Get Off Me. And the Get Off Me song was kind of like a street record. Um, she was dissing Eve, you know, uh, female rapper Eve that was a part of Rough Riders. She was like going in, like uh, flaming her. And I'm like, this is not cool. I like Eve. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. <laughs> I want to produce for Eve one day. And I want Rough Riders coming after me thinking I'm a part of this. So, you know, I was young. I didn't know how it worked. And they was like, listen, man, that, that beef or whatever's going on musically is between Foxy and Eve. You produced it, but you're not the one that's actually saying what's being said. She is. So that moment was kind of a celebratory moment too. So now I have the Cradle to the Grave song on the movie and soundtrack, which is, you know, a commercial release. Then I have this kind of buzz disc record that's being played, you know, on the radio by like Funkmaster Flex and on all of the mixtapes that are dropping. So it's kind of like a, a two for one deal, but that was pretty much how it all started for me. That is so interesting because Foxy and my, my husband really developed a relationship Wow. And um, she, my husband was just intrigued by her. And she came to our apartment here in New York. I mean, I, my husband and I were here and cooked for two days. It was two wow. days over two days that she cooked. And, and I was interviewing her during that time also okay. while she was cooking, you know. Wow. But he was just crazy about it. We didn't have a girl. We only had boys. Okay. Um, but my husband... It was so funny because he, he was a straight laced guy. He was uh, regulating oil pipelines and nuclear reactors for uh, for the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, but he quit his job to come and work with me in, in rock and roll. And right, rap. right, <laughs> so, right. That's more fun. It's definitely more fun than what he was doing. <laughs> so what should, uh, I, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you through different things, but there's other things that come to me now. So uh, you're raising sons now. Yes, I yes, I have a son. He's fifteen. He's fifteen. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pull for our children to, outside of the home. How do you deal with them? How do you discipline? Because this is huge. This is huge right now because there's no parenting going on. We don't even know how to parent because we don't have their minds like we did, like they had our minds with. I right. mean, there's social media, so much coming at them. We got to pull and push or whatever to get to our yes. children. Yes, yes, yes. So do you, are there any special tricks or something that you use or, or, or do you use the belt? Or But but you're not, <laughs> we're not allowed to use the belt anymore. Right. You know, I, I think for me, it's just always being honest and transparent with, um, you know, he's a boy. So that makes it a, a tad bit easy dealing with it, you know, dealing with him because, you know, I can relate in every way being that he's a male. Um, but we just have a really great relationship. Um, we've always had that. There's never been any issues between, you know, with us or me not being present. I've always been present. I love, you know, being a dad. I feel like, you know, it's 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 the best job in the world. Like out of everything I'm doing, out of everything I'm done, I've done being a father. It's it's like my pride and joy. Um, do you I think share that with other men about their children? How they, right. you know, tell? Do you talk about that? Because oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely do. And, and, and I showed I, you know, I kind of cooled off a little bit on the, you know, the postings on social media just for, you know, to, 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 for, for safety measures, you know, to be uh, cautious, because there's a lot of people out here that, that don't mean well for you, you know what I mean? And, 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 and you cooled off a minute, you told him not to post? Or well, what? no, because I would post, you know, various pictures of us together and kind of okay, okay. put them on my social media platform. And I kind of cooled off from that you know, because you just not never know people's intentions and, and, and people are out of control to the point where, you know, God forbid somebody's after me or somebody got a problem with me, can't get to me, knows what he looks like, you know, know where he's at and and, and make a move on him. So I kind of cooled off, you know, on that. But, you know, straight, straight, straightforward, 
Um, what should a, fathers do? Give me a couple of things that you tell your son that maybe, I just think that there's no, um, no teaching left right. in, in our homes anymore. We let social media or the television set or whatever to, we have to provide time where we sit the children down. Right. My father, it was on uh, Sunday mornings and we had to, um, he would make us read the newspaper or something that was a Bible. Then we had to comment on that and that sort of thing. So, um, I mean, we have to implement things that we know that the children are going to, well, I know on Sunday, I got to right. know what's going on. You know what I mean? Right. Do you have any suggestions? Well, I think so. You know, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give it, I'll give you my experience from two different lens, right? So, Growing up, you know, when I was married at the time, you know, we were under one household, right? Um, so we were raising him, um, you know, we're going to church every Sunday. And even with me being successful in music, I was still a musician at my church. Um, and, okay. then once, and then once I started touring, you know, I couldn't be at two places at the same time, but my church home was my church home. Um, and, you know, I, we both- What, um, what kind of church was it? Pentecostal? Uh, Pentecostal, yes, Pentecostal. Um, I don't know that, I don't, okay. Yeah, you know, you know the sauce, the seasoning, <laughs> you know, so, you know, we went to church every Sunday, sometimes during the week. Um, so, and of, of course, when, when, whenever we went, he was there with us um, and he had to pay attention in the service. He had to learn, he went to Sunday school. So th the same upbringing that I had, you know, I instilled in him and we brought up him in the same way, but I just felt like I took it to the next level, right? Because growing up for me, uh, my father was in my life. My father, very spiritual, deacon, head deacon in the church, you know, different positions and everything like that. But he wasn't very affectionate. Like that wasn't how he was raised. So when it come, came time to raise me, everything is tough. No tears, strong, you know, your boy, your man, straighten up, you know what I mean? And I kind of took the opposite approach to that where mm -hmm. I'm very affectionate with my son. You know, yes. I hug him and kiss him. He, he, he almost taller than me. And when I see him or, you know, I go have my, my time to visit him or, you know, or him to come visit me. And the first thing we do is hug and I embrace him and I kiss him. You know what I mean? And I told him I'm going to be doing that as long as I got breath in my body. I don't care if he's 50, <laughs> if I'm still here, yeah. I'm going to kiss him. So I think that yeah. alone is, is, a, is a blessing because it shows that men can be affectionate, right? And men can be loving and nurturing to, you know, one another without it, you know, Know, being frowned upon or without it being with an eight you know what I mean I'm a straight man you know I'm I'm, I'm a straight man I'm a hundred percent man no questions no curiosity no nothing right but I'm affectionate with my son and there's nothing wrong with that and I think society has kind of created or built this this idea that men can't cry men can't share emotions men can't tell other men that they love it without being love them without it being funny mm -hmm. you know so i think that's that that loving aspect is a plays a big part too because he knows that i love him and care and i'm showing it and demonstrating that versus it just being something that i'm saying out of my mouth you know what i mean well i mean if if men are not supposed to cry why did god give them tears so that right there that answers that question right there so don't be stupid i mean i, I have very little tolerance when right. when People come up with stupid stuff right that they, it, because children have to be loved you gotta they gotta be someplace where they feel safe and that should be at home because you know they're going to get kicked in the ass if they go when they go outside so mm -hmm. what are you doing here right so that's good that you learned learned that and so now he, he how old is he about 15 15 yeah he's 15 now he'll be uh turning 16 <laughs> in march <laughs> you only have one child just one baby so one that one that i created and one that i'm raising so i have a i have a princess a baby girl that's seven um she has two dads i'm dad number two okay. um but i love her to life you know um you know and, and and she's an amazing being and it's just amazing that it's two completely different situations it's complete opposite to you know be raising a boy on one hand and and, and a girl on the other hand so it's, it's hilarious you know i'm i'm she's getting older and um, stuff is changing <laughs> and I'm having a fit. <laughs> have a fit. <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready for the changes. I'm not ready for stuff to start developing. I'm not, I'm not ready for nothing. I'm not ready for none of it. How, how did you choose your wife though? The first one? Okay, this is the second, you have two wives or? Well, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the, the first one, you know, we, that, that didn't work out, but uh, like I mentioned, we, we're co-parenting. Um, and that's been pretty cool, you know, so for those that, um, you know, are no longer together, um, you know, there's still ways to be mature 
mm -hmm. um, and positive. And, and at the end of the day, you guys will always have some something and someone in common. And that's that amazing being that you guys created. So, you know, co-parenting with my son. Um, I'm not married for a second time, uh, but I do have a queen. We're not married right now. We're not married as of yet. No. Well, how does today, how does a, uh, the, a guy choose a wife today? Now, the reason why I'm asking this, we see women who are just like, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, oh, uh, we're talking about WAP and we're right. talking about, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, and this twerking and, uh, you know, right. the whole club scene and a whole strip club thing came up out of the strip club. Right. To everywhere and right. all over. And um, I kind of watched that develop. You know, I've been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm, so I mm -hmm. saw, saw how that was starting to happen. And, you know, when you go to the clubs, the, the guys, the, the guys and girls stop dancing face to face. But they started, the guy would dance behind the girl and she's rubbing up behind him. Right, right. <laughs> I said, okay, where is this going to lead to? Right. A lot of, Ill, not illegitimate, but it'd be a lot of kids with being born out of wedlock. Right. Also, a lot of men getting what they want without any investment into mm. anything. Right, powerful. You, you see what I'm saying? So, right. I'm like, okay, Lord, we're, I, I can see, well, I'm programming the music, so I know right. what, what's being, uh, you know, taught to us, mm -hmm. how to act and everything. And then there's money and there's beats, infectious beats and, and all that, you know, there's no other race, if you think about it, where you have so many poets, you all are poets, and then you have the nerve to put infections infectious beats on that poetry right who does that <laughs> hundreds of you are thousands you, who does that i mean <laughs> come on you know you don't see that in germany you don't see right it in germany, you don't see it in china uh -uh. so our men are able to move a whole world yes okay now but what are we moving them to mm. so you tell me I just got to know what, what's going on here because, I mean, I'm a little bit older and I don't know what the hell y'all trying to sell out there. I don't know if we're better off. Some of us, but I understand there's a transitional thing that has to go on. Right. Because now, I, there was a time that there was one or two millionaires, Black, mm -hmm. in my day when I was coming out. There are hundreds of you are now trillionaires, billionaires. Not trillionaires. Well, maybe a trillionaire or two, but you guys are doing pretty good. Now we got to get the money is out there. It's come, you know, coming to us in our neighborhood and stuff. We're spending it, getting rid of it as soon as it comes in, but we'll, we'll learn better later on. Right. Right. But, um, where are we going from here? You know, <laughs> what do you, where, where do you see us going? Are you happy with how we're making our, uh, I mean, <laughs> prison too? I mean, we got millionaires, billionaires, and we got, millions of our men and women in jail right right that's true that's and true. guess what i got a video of um busy bone i think it was busy bone telling a, um, a dj how um these white people white men came to them they were businessmen and they mm -hmm. wanted you all to continue with the gangster rap because they wanted to build out their jail system because they, you know, that's their business. Right. They said they had 500 jails at the time. I know, I think we got 1,700 now. And the more you, more gangster rap came out, that kind of, you know, a repetitious, I kick you, whatever, you know, all the stuff that is said in gangster rap, that leads to more warring, more shooting, more drugs, and things like that. And so we got all these men incarcerated now and mm -hmm. women. And that was done purposely. Right, right, right. Man, and 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 it's funny because uh, one of the artists got released today uh, from from jail. Uh, Rowdy, uh, he's a part of um, I think it's GS Nine is the name of the group. Him and Bobby Schmurder. Um, so he he actually did seven years. He did seven years in jail, and his partner, the one that he uh, raps with, I think is still in, and it's not um, coming out until 
next year around this time. But uh, yeah, so my, you know, one of the artists just got released and, you know, it sucks. And, and, you know, you think about a few of the artists that recently just got in, you know, got in, got in some, got in some trouble, Casanova and um, I think G Herbo, um, you know, some, you know, it's, it's, it's tough, man. And one thing about music, um, music, and if you do music and concentrate and focus on the music, like you can get out of, you know, some of the things you've come in, come up in right, exactly. and, and allowed yourself to be a part of. But I think sometimes, you know, and I don't know, cause I, I've never lived that life, but from my thoughts, I feel like that life can possibly be so good to them in regards to whatever revenue or whatever money they're bringing in, even though it's a, 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 from a legal standpoint, that is so good. And sometimes music be up and down and you have seasons where you're on fire and you're bringing in a lot of money and then you you can have seasons when it's the complete opposite of that, when you're either losing money or not bringing in money at all. Um, so it's difficult. It's a difficult business to be in. Um, so I can understand why people, you know, kind of have one foot in the business and then have one foot in the street still. You know well, what I mean? When do we learn how to grow our money instead of giving it away and throwing it away in the clubs? I've never seen it. I, I think, uh, mm, well, I don't want to say the rapper's thing, but he took me to a, a strip club one time and we went upstairs and I mean, there's, you know, of course there's money yeah. all on, the, all on the, uh, the chandeliers and the lamps up there, you know, that landed on, on just money everywhere. And um, then you can have all this money now and then nothing later. I mean, do you all ever teach the young guys coming up saying, look, put some money aside. Right. This it doesn't have to last forever. Yeah, we, we it's, there's definitely a lot more of that going around. You know, people kind of uh, looking towards, you know, financial literacy and just wanting to grow and understanding that, you know, it's 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 good to get to buy property um, versus the, you know, the, the, the usual, the usual suspects, the cars, the jewelry, the clothing, you know, the frivolous spending, you know, so I think there's a lot more education when it comes to you know the finances happening right now, now is everybody now you, listening? You you're a um, you you're an elder in the in the music business. Not that you're old, but you've right. been around for a long time. Right. What are some of the things that you learned on the road that you know you would caution other artists who are those coming up and saying you know you watch out for this. First of all, you got to watch out for screwing. Re, uh, just haphazardly and then having to take care of a kid right right years, right which is a dumb piece of shit to me i mean i okay so do you ever say that to the guys or do you pass on the wisdom and the knowledge that you have yes absolutely and and and, and not just by sharing it with my words but leading by 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 an example with my actions you know what i mean what um mean? you know so like what when i first was torn with trey songs you know, I was married at that time, you know what I mean? And I was like faithful, like, and Trey, Trey loved it. You know what I mean? Trey loved it. Like whenever a conversation came up that involved couples or, you know, maybe somebody in the team, one of the fellas in the team was going through some situations and needed some advice. He would like rush to call me in, like, yo, talk to Amadeus because, you know, he's, he's, he's married, like he's faithful. Like I watch him every day. I watch him while we're on the road. I watch how he handles himself. I watch how he respects his family. You know what I mean? And what he has, um, you know, so I've, I've always led and tried my best to lead by example and not just be talking and, and, and you know what I mean? Saying stuff and not, you know, um, practicing what I'm preaching. So I've really, really been big on that. And yeah, just, I've always been real, a person that loved to teach and love to drop gems and love to get information that people, especially brothers will be benefit can, that can benefit from. So that's always been me. Absolutely. Okay. okay. One of the biggest, one of the biggest things that happens, how are you going to talk to these little 13, 14, 15 year old boys or girls and tell them, you know, save your money. Girls are going to be hitting on them. And you know, you guys at that age, you're just looking for some hole, a hole to poke something into. Right. <laughs> <laughs> The urges are strong, right? But and then then the the women can be predators also because Absolutely. they want that. You know, are you able to talk? Are you able to say anything to them at all? And and if you have said something to some of them, did it stick? Did it did it matter to them? Did they pay attention or 
did you know they just went on and did what they had to do because well, it's a lot that goes into your head when you're on the road right. you think you're a king or star or whatever uh-huh mm-hmm. i mean yeah i mean and that's and i, I say it all the time and I, and I i think about it this way when when it comes to raising our kids and all you can do is give them the information all you can do is give them the knowledge and and instill and morals and values and spirituality into them right at the end of the day jamie they're gonna do what they want to do and and, and I've, i i would say that to my mom you know my younger 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 sister and it's like mom you you, you up late waiting to see if she come if she came home at a certain time you you know watching to see who she on the phone with listen you you driving yourself crazy trying to keep up with uh, you know your youngest daughter right when you're older age you're older in age and i said it like all you can do is all we can do is teach her the right way you know and and, and show her she has older brothers you know she's you know I, my, my other brother's single so he's he, you know he moves and lives differently and it's like and she he even tells her like you see how i move you see how i roll you see how i get down like like it's happening right in front of your face you know what i mean so I'm here to give you the signs and show you what can be done if you allow us to do this. You know what I'm saying? So you have no excuse of why you will fall for the same nonsense when I'm putting you on the game. You know what I mean? So well, he actually, um, um, he actually teaches her because you see, see, a lot of women are not being raised by men. Right. I was raised by a man, so a father in the home. So that means that he was he was sit us all on a sofa and he said, you know, let um little boys go up your dress all these things wow. that a, a man doesn't you know he was straight on with us straight up, yeah he said look you know you don't want to be out here without a uh with a, without a man to raise your child mm-hmm. and also you little boys will come and go they're, they're just looking for one i mean that was every sunday we're on the sofa wow we're like what is he talking about <laughs> you know we're like right. 12 and 13 years old but he was he was right it did we did pretty good. The girls did pretty good. Okay. You know, none of us had babies out of wedlock. We awesome. got the education. We did. We did what we made them proud. Right. Awesome. Ever. It was my father would beat the hell out of us if we did. <laughs> so that that's what the kids is, missing these days, man. That's that's what's missing right now. Like there's no fear away. factor. They, they took us that. They, they took that right away from us. Right. And then we have all this other noise coming into our kids' heads. So mm-hmm. we're in competition with other people, other things that they see. Right. Music is very, very sexual. Yes. Very yeah. violent. Yes. Also yes. very unforgiving, unforgiving. So I don't know what a parent is supposed to, unless they're like you, you know, that you know better and that you have right. a tight reign. Right. And that's, and that's, and that's, and you hit it right on the head because I listened to, everything my parents didn't want me to listen to I snuck and did it like so I, I had the Wu-Tang you know uh, cassette tapes I had the uh, uh, Naughty by Nature and the brand Nubian and you know and my parents frowned upon that music because of the profanity and what was being said right but I would assure them I'm like listen I'm not really gravitating towards the lyrical content. Like for me, it's the music. It's what's happening underneath the lyrics that's getting my attention. I love the music. I love the beats, you know? And and I would, you know, kind of try to reassure them that like, listen, I'm not gonna be doing what they're rapping about, you know? But I got it even as a youngin, and that's why I don't, you know, certain things I think is overkill, certain things I think is, you know, disrespectful. And, and if that's the case, then I won't listen to it, right? But I've never been one to knock it or not them, because at the end of the day, it's all creativity. It's all them sharing stories and, 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 and speaking from their lenses, from their eyes, from their point of view, right? So who am I to be judgmental to say, hey, don't say that, or don't say it like this. Oh my God, I went through so much stuff with you all. Oh my God. <laughs> With that, I mean, you know, Dr. J and all the shit night and all them being threatened. Oh my God. So um <laughs> I went through I went through a lot. The I can't imagine. Yeah. I but I knew their parents, I knew their parents, their, their moms and dads and wow. stuff like that. Was trash, all of them. Wow. Because I was the only one writing about them. nobody Ebony Essence what nobody else was writing. They weren't touching. I said, these are our kids. What are you right. talking about? This right. is whether I agree with what they're saying or not, this is happening here. So. Right, right, right. 
And that's okay. why you're a legend. You said what I <laughs> That just means that I'm old. <laughs> no, no, that means you're wise. Like, <laughs> So out of all the people that you've worked with, and as Trey Sounds, Jennifer Lopez, Justin Bieber, The Game, Chris Brown, Keish Cole, okay, tell me stories. What's the what's the most exciting one? I mean, or uh, even how they came to you? Who you know? Just tell me what did you feel like? Oh, they called, they chose me. <laughs> right, know? right, right. I think you know the Chris Brown situation is a pretty cool situation because There's a lot of songs you did a lot of songs. Yes, we got we probably got about. 2025 20, released songs uh, at the moment. And the story about how we all came together was dope because I was on tour with Trey Songs. Um, Monica was on that tour with us as well. She was co-headlining. And my boy with Lonnie, shout out to Lonnie Burrell, he was singing backgrounds for Monica. So we had a, off, a few days off on tour. You know, sometimes people stay on the bus, sometimes people fly home. Lonnie was flying to LA to go do a studio session with Chris. So he's like, you know, he heard I was a producer, heard some of my music. Yo, bro, give me a CD. I'll play it for. I'll play. You know, we call him CB. I'll play it for CB. Was he? Like, a, what was it? Was it? What was he with Chris? He was the what? No, he was. They, they was just boys. Oh, oh they okay. was just boys. Yeah, because he, he's a songwriter and he's an artist as well. So he kind of, you know, boys with Chris Brown. He's kind of hangs out a lot with Jamie Foxx. So he's just just very well connected in LA. Um, so I gave him a CD. Um, you know, and and we and he left with the LA and we finished the tour and I didn't know any, you know, nothing developed right. So. After I get home from off the road, I, I come across this mixtape by Tiger. It's, it's, it's called Well Done Too. So I'm listening to the mixtape. I'm like, Mr. Mixtape is pretty dope, dope, but this is part two. Let me go check out part one. I go check out part one. Okay. I'm listening to part one. This song comes on with Tiger and it's featuring Chris Brown. And I'm like, this sounds really familiar. <laughs> so come to find out, Jamie, like the track was mine, but there was no business handled. There was no credit given, nothing. And so I'm researching this song, come to find out it's on World Star, right? With 14 million views because they shot a video to the song and everything. Mind you, I had no idea that any of this had happened with my they song. They still have World Star? Do they still? Well, the it's not as big as it was, but World Star is still here. Yeah, it's kind of more in the social media. And you know, instead of it being online or like the YouTube thing, but yeah, so it was on World Star, right? What did you do? What did you do? So I got angry. I'm not gonna lie, I got angry, and but I didn't get in my feelings, right? I didn't want the check. I didn't want money from it, and and, and I remember calling Puff at that time because he was managing me at that time, and he's like, "So what do you want to do? What do you want me to do?" And I say, "Here's what I want to do. I want to get credited for the song. So let's have Chris Brown, let's have Tiger go on Twitter. Instagram wasn't happening yet." Let's go on Twitter, let them tweet that I produced the record, right? So Chris Brown, Tiger, and Puff tweets I produced the record. This creates pandemonium online because a lot of people love this song, right? So it started that way. And I said, listen, instead of money, forget the money. I'm not mad. Can Let's hear, build. You got it there? Huh? Can I hear the song? The, or the name of the song? Can I hear it? Oh, let me see. Do I got it over here? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see if I can get out of here and play it for you. You keep talking to me. Longer. Okay. Yeah. So, so the the moment for me, here I got it right here. So I got the beat. Do I have the song? Let me see if I can find the song. So the cool thing about what I did was instead of ruining the relationship, right, or or wanting to get paid, <laughs> I I, I saw the bigger picture of saying, hey man, keep the money. Like let's work. Let's create music. Let's make hits, okay. you know? And that pretty much is what kicked us off. And, you know, me and Chris have been friends since then. And we've created so many records together. Um, I have the track here. Let me see. Where are you? Are you still is in it? New York? Huh? Yeah, I'm, in, I'm still in New York, yeah. Why? You didn't want to move out to LA? Hold on, let me stop this. I can't hear you. Say it again, Jamie. You can't do two things at one time. Come on, you're a producer. You no, because what, what it is is that I'm plugged into the headphones. <laughs> that was teasing. Go ahead. And then, wait, hold on. So let me let me let me take the headphones out. Your old man. Oh, I can't do <laughs> I'm just teasing. So this is the track. So the name of the song is called Wonder Woman. Real sexy, real, you know, ballad. 
Trace, I mean, uh, Chris Brown is on the hook. Um, Tiger's on the verses rapping. You know, it's a real dope vibe. I can't hear them. So, so, so I, what I'll do is I'll send it to you, and then maybe, okay. maybe we can edit it in. Um, you know, edit it in the interview. Um, but yeah, man, that's, so that's how that came about. And then after that, the rest was history. Um, we 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 wrote it. We did a record called "Same Girl" for J Lo that Chris Brown wrote and I produced. We did a, a record for Justin Bieber, which was Christmas Eve um, on his Christmas album that Chris Brown wrote and I produced. We did, I had nine songs on Chris Brown's album, Heartbreak on the Full Moon. Um, really? Oh my God. Yeah, which, which is double platinum now. I think he had about 74 songs on that album. It was like a double, a double CD. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my God, okay. Yeah. That, um, that, so, this just came, you're still not, uh, I remember you had an award when I got the award mm -hmm. from that, that wonderful woman, Tia. Yes. Man, she was so good, so nice. And so I didn't know who you were at that time, but you knew who I was. Right? I knew who you was. <laughs> big time, big time. I was like, yo, Jamie's getting an award. Oh, man. I miss I miss being out there. I'm good, but well, you know, I have this show, so you're gonna get me some of those artists to come on the show. Yes, We're gonna I'm talk. Not, yes, yes, okay, yes. So now, this is what I'm I'm interested in. Black men, they're they're my major. And and I'm glad that you are. You know, we need someone that that, that loves on us and cares about us and you know pushes us. Is enough is enough of the world you know beating us down and and making us trying to make us feel less than you know who we are so i appreciate you for celebrating us and you know i want to work on that with you and get some of the guys on and then I, we, we want solutions here you know suggestions like jamie like i'm asking you how you raise your child so right. what are the words what do we say let's do some teaching here right um i find that our our today we're very mean to one another especially with social media yes I that agree. has to stop i agree that's not building a great nation, and, and it's, it's so hurtful. People don't just, uh, you know, shrug things off, especially as children. Right. You hear things about yourself. So we have to, um, to me, the only reason why I'm like, look, I can, you know, I'm pretty much done what I thought. I told what God told me I had to do, you know, with this magazine, and, you know, I was with mm -hmm. BT and all that, you know. Right. But, you know, so I said, okay, God. I did, you know, I did sister to sister for 25 years. It's time for me to relax. I want to get a boyfriend and go be on an island somewhere. So he told me, I'm not done with you. Right. <laughs> I am not done with you. Right. Get your butt up. Get out of that bed. You know, I was watching television 24 hours a day and just um, having a real good time by myself. You know, right. but, but I see so much hate. I see so much hurt. It bothers me. I, I'm not happy. I'm right. really not right. happy. I agree. And um, and I just need partners to work with me to, to let's just start, you know, just like you came up with some new beats. Right. Come up with some new thoughts and how we raise our sons. Right. Because I when I hear women uh, saying, boy, you do stupid just like your dad. You do right. you know, like right. two years old or something like that, you know. Right. Why are you uh, pushing him down? He hasn't even had a chance to grow yet. Or right. Right. So true. So and true. See, the thing about black boys, you all are not ordinary. Mm. That's why I told you at the beginning of this interview, there is no other nation that has what hundreds of you all as poets. No matter what you're saying, you're poets. Right, right. right. And you're musicians with these beats that the whole world, I mean. You might have a few other people like that over in Asia or something like that, but the whole right. world doesn't embrace it. Like, right, right. Like they embrace, so yes. We have to understand the magic that is inside of us. And, and you, Black man, have to understand it more than anyone because you all carry the nation. Amen. That's true, true. You know, are you still going to church? Uh, well, of course, prior to the pandemic, I would try to go to church, but I couldn't be there physically because of my residency in Vegas. So on the weekends, um, I would fly fly out on Fridays and perform at the club Friday, Saturday, and Sunday every weekend, and come back um, on Monday. So I wouldn't, I wasn't there 
in the physical form at church, but you know, I do watch all of the service. I, I love Joel Osteen. I love, I love Jake's, uh, even my church, uh, does the, uh, the live stream, um, you know, online so that even though I wasn't in town, I was still well, able to wait, tap in. What's the name of your church? Um, Cathedral at Greater Faith. Cathedral at Greater Faith Temple in the Bronx. Is that, what is that? What denomination? Uh, Pente Pentecostal. Oh, it's Pentecostal. You mm -hmm. didn't say that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting because I just finished talking to Shirley Mac Murdoch's uh, uh, husband, who's a minister. Okay. Also, and I told him, I, I watched Joel. I watched Charles Stanley. Yes, and, I like Charles. And, yeah, and then I have my two pastors, uh, uh, Zion in uh, Landover, Keith. Uh, and, I mean, he's incredible. And then I have Pastor Walwyn, who's up here. Okay. But I need to soak all that in because I'm yes. trying to learn things. I'm trying to learn uh, you know, how do I speak? Because I'm older than you got you guys, and so you know, I have to kind of, you know. You got it. You got it. Well, you got it. Tell me a minute. We find out about cheddar. What that cheddar cheese? Or what are we talking about? <laughs> are we gonna make a grilled cheese sandwich with some cheddar? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm kind of silly. Anyway, I love it. Uh college tour you went on that and you did a college tour yeah yeah and that was pretty much me educating you know the students on the music music business and the behind the scenes and kind of introducing them um to all of the other areas in music that you can function in and work in besides being in the forefront you know and, and i and i did that because for me coming up i had to figure it out on my own i had to teach myself i had to get books and literature and educate myself on the business and how to understand the business so moving forward and me being where I'm at today, I wanted to turn around and be the opposite. I wanted to teach people and give them the tools and the information that they, they need to be successful in the music uh, in, in the music business. So we're doing a college tour for three years and then of course the pandemic happened and we had to stop. But um, it's amazing because, you know, I was able to bring that tour and that panel to a lot of amazing schools, NYU, Hampton, okay. Howard, mm -hmm. Yale, Harvard, um, you know, so for, for, for a young king without a, college degree to be in college, you know, teaching and, and educating, man, was just a blessing and just amazing how God, you know, put me in that position to be able to do so. So I'm extremely proud of that, you know, I'm proud of those Good moments. Stuff. So who are you working on now? Um, I, I, I produced a record on T.I.'s new album. Um, it okay. dropped about two months ago. Um, the Libra album, did a record call On The Hood um, on that album. Um, there's a, a dope female artist by the name of Justina Valentine. Mm -hmm. um she was on the the nick cannon mtv show wildin out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. really dope actress and artist so we produced a few songs on her album and honestly jamie just just trying to deal with this pandemic man um you know i've been speaking a lot i've been on doing a lot of I, ig lives and doing different interviews and paying homage to you know those that have come before me and and paved the way and giving them their flowers and their roses while they're here to smell it so i had like um, I had Big Daddy Kane on IG Live. I had um, you had Big Daddy Kane on. Yeah, Dougie Fresh. Um, um, Pete, uh, who I had a uh, Eric Sermon, Sway, uh, Slimmer One Twelve, Kelly Price. Um, mind you, like you know, the, and that's was the the positive from the pandemic. Carl Thomas, like I didn't know a lot of them directly, you know. So it just was about, about me being fearless and reaching out to them, you know, via DM or email and. You know, a lot of them responded and a lot of them was cool to have the conversation and it was epic. So I've been kind of doing more of that and just inspiring the people and, and, and uplifting people because these are some real challenging times that we're living in. So kind of eased up on the music to just to make sure that I was OK mentally and, and making sure that I can help others be OK mentally as well. And then, you know, hopefully when this thing opens back up, I can get back to it. Are you are your musical chops um, still? Or... You know what's funny? I swear to you, I just said that today. I was like, man, I wonder if I could. I said, yeah, I wonder if I could still play drums. Absolutely. <laughs> I was like, I might pick up the drumsticks and sound a mess. Huh? <laughs> I said, I might pick up the drumsticks and sound the drumsticks and sound a mess. You are you serious? I don't Listen, think so. It's been I haven't touched the drumsticks, Jamie, since February, and that's the longest. I, oh, I, yeah. Did you well, you've been traveling or no, the pandemic. Yeah, that pandemic, yeah. So I haven't touched the, you know, and I'm 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 afraid, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I could have went to a rehearsal studio and and practice a little bit, but I just wanted to stay inside. I didn't want to take any chances. You know, a lot of people that, you know, caught this thing and a lot of people that's close to home that caught this thing that, 
that really take care of themselves and that really do the right thing and still caught it. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep were my- Were they still going out? Were they still well, going Well, like, like kind of working. You know what I mean? Like the oh. majority of them, you know, nine to fives. You know, my nephew was working at Walmart, you know, him and his girlfriend. And they both came down with it like a week or two ago. My other boy was working at like CVS, you know? And it's just, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to not- when you're around people and you're traveling on public transportation. So you're and, you're inside the house all the time. And yeah, it, I don't, I, I go, I go to the gym. Okay. I gym. Yeah, really? Yeah. But what the dope part is, is that it's downstairs, it's in a building. Um, the and building. It's, it's, it's in a building where I live and it's, and, and it's only one person can be in there at the time, at one time. So okay. when I'm in there, no one else is in there and you schedule the time that you want to be in there. So I'm in there alone. I spray it all up. I, I I sanitize all of the machines. I have my, I'm like I'm like extra with everything. <laughs> it's probably overkill, but you know, not going good. I haven't gotten anything, so I'm gonna keep doing what I've been doing. But yeah, other than that, other than essentials, groceries, I'm in the house. What about um, the music? Are you in your private studio, or what? What are you doing musically? There? Well, you know, I don't. No, um, I don't have, I mean, music these days can be created on a laptop, right? So that's, it's pretty portable of, of what you can do. Uh, yeah. But honestly, I, I really, honestly, Jamie, I haven't been in a, in much of a creative space, you know, since this pandemic hit, because like you said, we were dealing with the pandemic and then on top of that, dealing with a lot of what was happening to, you know, our black kings and queens in regards to, you know, police brutality and people being killed by the police. And I just... And, and, and I've been doing this for, for going on 20 years. Next year will be 20 years. And I've been running full speed mm -hmm. the whole time, right? So um, for, for, it was a moment for me to sit my ass down. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have chose to sit my ass down, you know? So I'm not happy about that part of it because it's affected me mentally, right. physically, yeah. spiritually, and financially. Um, but I'm not mad at the sit down. Like I'm not mad at the rest because it allows me to just cool off, to take a take a seat for a little bit, mm -hmm. gather myself, reevaluate, put things into perspective, you know, just get myself together. You know what I mean? So I haven't really been creatively creative like that. But I do have an arsenal of me, um, which I've been making and creating over the years. So no worries, there's no lack in music so i'm still <laughs> sending chris brown music i'm still sending trey songs music i send about four or seven folders out to different artists today so i'm still you know the music is there and i can still relax and still move things around and create records so that that definitely is still happening so no worries it's not like i, I quit i stopped i threw in a towel I, I'm, I'm still here okay so i'm glad you gave me this time to share with you we got work to do Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so either you send, you can give my, my number or your number or my number, whatever. Okay. Okay. Set it up and we'll see who we're going to hit on next. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm down with it. I got you. About, you know, the guys that we can talk to or women. Okay. And just, uh, let's sit down and have some chats about what we're going to do. Right. Yeah. So it's needed. Okay. It's needed. Right. And listen, I'm honored. To listen, I'm honored. I'm happy. Uh, uh, I can scratch something else off my bucket list today. Oh, you know? don't scratch me off your list. No, not, I go right okay. to the top again. Okay. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Thanks for hanging out with us. Love Thank you. you. Thank you. Love you as well. Thank you so much, Queen. Blessings okay. to you. Be safe, all right? All right. Okay, now. Thank you.